it has been another beautiful week in the Toronto GTA area and I'm outside on my street just enjoying the fall weather and again it's a reminder of what we see in the seasons that God has created for us well we just want to say this morning welcome to worship and we are so excited to bring you into this space with us and here we are going to meet God together I don't know about you, but particularly today, I want to choose to rejoice in God's attention today. I don't know if you've ever thought about that, but we're going to rejoice together in God's attention. And I want to read from a portion of scripture that uh, focuses us on joy. And together we're going to be talking about God's word and how it not only is something we need to do as a sacred rhythm, but how it's a transformation thing for us. And Psalm 126, one to three says this, we are filled with laughter and we sing with joy. And the other nations said, what amazing things the Lord has done for them. Yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What a joy. Well, I just want to affirm what a joy it is that you have joined us. And whether you are in Neighborhood Church or whether you're just joining us online, uh, we want you to share in that joy together as we hear from God's Word and as we experience sacred rhythms in the way that we are choosing to understand and rejoice in God's attention. So now, let us pause and let us prepare our hearts for all that God has for us in the next little bit. Lord God, we wanna thank you today for joining us here for allowing us to worship you, for the connections that we have with you in these days. And we pray right now that we would become attentive to your joy, attentive to who you are, and attentive for the way in which we can experience you in your word. Be with us now, Lord God, as we worship. This we pray in your name, amen. Now, let's sing together.
Every year on November 11th, Canadians pause and reflect in remembrance for the men and women who have served and continue to serve our country during times of war, conflict, and peace. As we prepare for this week, we honor those who fought for Canada in the First and Second World Wars, the Korean War, the war in Afghanistan, and all conflicts in which members of the Canadian Armed Forces have bravely defended the liberty and peace we enjoy. We will now hear the famous poem by John McRae called In Flanders Fields. This poem is often recited at ceremonies of remembrance. Thank you, Caitlin, for sharing this poem today. Please take time on Friday, November 11th, to pause and reflect. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Go up as the walls come down on creation. 
creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound of His children. Clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. Sweet wine, all you heavens, let the praise go up as the walls come down. I'll create. Hi, and welcome to some time in the Word with Richmond Hill Community Church. So glad you could join us today, and I hope you're ready to take a look at God's Word together. We are continuing with our series on sacred rhythms. And before I begin, I need to tell you that the confession message from a couple of weeks back is still lingering in my heart and in my mind. It's so good for the soul, isn't it, to engage in confession before our loving Heavenly Father. So much so that I have another confession for you. There are times in my inexplicable madness when attempting to build something or set something up, I don't read the instructions. Any men willing to raise their hand and join me in this confession? Okay, thanks guys. Actually, I have a couple of memes for you that you might enjoy. Here they are. Men say that women should come with instructions. What's the point of that? Have you ever seen a man actually read instructions? Here's another one. Real men don't read instruction manuals. We build it twice. You know, men, I think we set out with good intentions, don't we? But then we get on a roll, and when we get a few steps right on our own, we're excited about it, and we're ticking along, and then something somewhere goes sideways. And the thing is, we don't always recognize it right away until we get to the end and we have parts left over or something doesn't look quite right and then we have to face the ultimate shame the do-over and what should have taken an hour takes three hours tell me i'm wrong you absolutely can't Today we are focusing on instructions, the ones that God has given to us to help us live the life that He has intended. Today we are focusing on the sacred rhythm of Scripture. So let's crack it open. Everyone turn to the book of Joshua. We are going to be looking at Joshua 1 verses 1 to 8. So press pause and read the passage now, and we'll be back in just a moment.
Okay, let's get into this sacred rhythm of Scripture. In our passage from Joshua that you just read, we find a scene where Joshua replaces Moses as the leader of the Israelites. The nation was just coming out of this 40 years of wandering in the desert and trying to get to the land that God had promised. But because of their waywardness, they could not cross the line. They couldn't take hold of what God had promised them. Enter Joshua. Emerging from the fray with God's blessing and a reiteration of his promise. He is ready to lead God's people home. Now, when we read this passage, we often focus on the encouragement that God gives to the Israelites to be strong and courageous because he will be with them on their journey. Three times it's mentioned. It's an assurance of his presence. And I don't think that it's a coincidence that in the midst of this passage, we find verse 7b and verse 8, which always stand out to me when I read them. Maybe you too. They say this, Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a rhythm to me. And this is early on right? Grassroots of God's people. And God tells them that the key to their overall success and prosperity was in making his word a part of their everyday lives. Their ability to be strong and courageous in the face of their ad- adversity depended upon their full embrace of the scriptures as a sacred rhythm as a spiritual discipline. The book of Hebrews also holds some interesting thoughts about the power and importance of God's Word in our lives. Hebrews 4 and 12 says, The Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Because they understood the spiritual nature of the scriptures, the writer to the Hebrews could write this with confidence to their audience. They were trying to get across that the Bible isn't merely a collection of old stories and wise anecdotes, but that it had and has inherent life and power. Regardless of what people may have thought, No preacher could make the Bible come alive. The Bible was alive. The scriptures were alive. The scriptures are alive. The scripture gives life to the preacher. And to anyone else who will receive it with faith. The writer says the word is sharper than any double-edged sword. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. You see, the writer of Hebrews wanted their audience to understand that the power of God's word was in its ability to change them from the inside out, to give them new life and show them how to move forward with strength and courage. To not only inform them, but to shape their lives as an encounter with him to transform them. You know, as we engage with scripture, 
as we engage with God's Word. We not only gather information about God, but we begin to form a relationship with Him. And as we grow in our closeness with Him, our hearts become more open to what He desires to show us. The most amazing thing about the Word of God is that after all of these years, it still reaches us. It still reaches us with surprising precision. And the Holy Spirit still empowers the ministry of the Word to work deeply within our hearts. Has it ever happened to you that someone in your life has come to you with an encouragement or a challenge from God's Word that is 100% relevant to what you are going through right at that moment? I know what's happened to me. Sometimes it might be a pastor. Sometimes it might be a speaker. Sometimes it might be a person that's sitting next to you, a colleague, a friend. Either way, you honestly wonder whether or not they have some secret information about your life. I mean, who have they been talking to, right? Look, I don't believe that that is the person at all. I believe it is the sharpness of the word of God, delivering the message in just the right place at just the right time. It is God knowing just what you need at just the right time and using another person to communicate that with you, with us. It's how he works through each other to each other. And it's very often a word about something in our lives that needs changing so that we can move into deeper relationship with God and move forward in our journey of faith. The writer of the biblical paraphrase, The Message, Eugene Peterson, he writes these words. Christians don't simply learn or study to use, or study or use rather, the scriptures. We assimilate them. We take them into our lives in such a way that it gets metabolized into acts of love, cups of cold water, missions into all the world, healing, evangelism, and justice in Jesus' name. Hands raised in adoration of the Father, feet washed in company with the Son. Beautiful words. In other words... God's Word has great power when it is applied to our lives, when it is lived out in our experiences, in relationship with each other. That is so, so, so good. So the sacred rhythm of Scripture is about more than simply building a habit of reading it, although it is about that. It's also about building a habit of engaging through our actions. The sad thing is that in our world today, God's Word can very often be used in a very manipulative way, sometimes even as a weapon against each other. How often do we forage its pages to find verses that support our off-base ideas and views? But this is not the purpose for which God intended his word. In Matthew 22, 34 to 40, a Bible expert asked Jesus what the greatest commandment in the law was. Jesus replied by saying this, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All of the law prophets hang on these two commandments. Saying God's word is to be the lens of love in a way that builds each other up, not tears each other down. Any use of scripture in this way, tearing each other down, 
is quite simply not what God wants for any of us. God intended his word to be a living word, a word that points each and every one of us to a transforming relationship with his son Jesus and brings us together in a relationship with each other. So you know what? My prayer today as our time in the Word comes to a close is that God's Word would continue to be something that informs us and instructs us, yes. But more importantly, something that continues to transform us, to change us, and unite us. Something that knits us together as a family the family of God, as we incorporate this sacred rhythm of Scripture into our everyday lives, sacred rhythm of the living Word. Let's pray together. Lord, we just want to thank you so much for your Word this morning. And we want to thank you for the way in which you choose to reveal yourself to us through your Word. A word that um, is living, a word that is present within us. And so Lord God, I pray in these moments that you would convict us to yearn to be more connected with your word, not just in a head knowledge, but Lord God, in a heart knowledge. We want to be attuned to your spirit in such a way that our rhythmic heartbeat is in line with yours. And it is your word that helps us do that. So Lord God, as we reflect, as we sing, and as we in a few minutes choose to go deeper into your word by conversation together in wisdom and knowledge of the collective, we pray that you would help us grow in who we are in you and that we would embrace the sacredness of your word in our everyday living. We pray all of this in your precious name. Amen. This dry and desert land, I tell myself, keep walking on. Here's something up ahead, water falling like a song. An everlasting stream, your river carries me home. Let it flow.
want to thank you for joining in Worship in the Word with RHCC today. Uh, whether you're in your home groups or whether you're watching online, uh, we pray that God has met you where you are, and we're praying that you are going to continue to engage in His Word together uh, through the resource, the reflection questions that are posted below or have been sent out to you. Uh, so we want you to engage in that, have a good, fruitful discussion of how to today's word to your life and how it can change you so that you're living differently in your own space and among those whom you have influence over today. Um, RHCC, just want to also mention that uh, we are starting tomorrow, going to be engaging in reading God's word together as a group of people through the app, She Reads Truth, He Reads Truth. And so if you haven't connected in with that, please get in contact with the office. Um, email, email us at info at rhccconline.ca and uh, get that code so that you can start your church subscription to the He Reads Truth, She Reads Truth app that allows us to just read the word together, to engage in some devotional space. And then on Tuesday, every Tuesday at noon and at 7 p.m., Chris and I are going to be on Zoom for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes to just discuss with you anything that's on your heart. So if you want to jump on there, we'll be putting that link out as well. Um, and uh, if you want to jump on and discuss with us and just unpack the Word and just get into the Word a bit more and what it means for your life and what it means for us as a church. So check out the app, download it, and we've got some instructions that we can share with you and that I believe we already have shared with you. But if you want to get in on that for tomorrow, it's starting Monday. It's praying the scriptures, I believe. Ah, how apt uh, that we'd be doing that following, talking about the sacred rhythm of scripture today. So um, check in with that and connect with us if you want to follow up with that. Um, otherwise, we hope you have a great day and uh, just connect with someone today. Uh, enjoy the outdoors if it's, if it's nice outside and um, just continue together uh, in relationship, both with God and with each other as we continue to build this kingdom together. God bless you. Have a great day. See you for now.